Hey everybody, welcome. This is Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and give me one second so I can get this up on my computer and give everybody a chance to get through that commercial. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like we're live. Okay, play, play, play the commercial. And let's see what we got. All right, looks like we have Becky with us. She's our bouncer, moderator, all extraordinaire with us, um, helping us down in Noonan, Georgia. Thank you so much, Becky. I hope you feel better. She's fighting a cold, so she's probably high on Sudafed about this point or trying to stay awake. So. <laughs> um, thank you so much for serving me, even though you're not feeling up to it. Um, just want to say hey to cats. And David Browning, welcome to our talk. Uh, and check off call. Is that right? Call, C-A-L. I think I said that right. Cool name. And Charlene Anderson, thank you. Hi to the Knit Addict again. Um, actually, yes, Becky corrected me. She's actually coming from Lynch calling or, or watching from Lynchburg. She's actually on a, I guess it's okay to say she's on a, a student photo shoot there, kind of helping some of the um, film students at Liberty University and working probably harder than she's ever worked in her life doing it. Hi to Carol, and um, okay, you said Cheryl. Okay, hi Cheryl, and um, Laura. Good to see you guys. Um, and Christie's Crochet Corner, welcome, welcome. Um, and Diane from Myrtle Beach, hello there. That's where my my son is not far from there in Conway. Um, Nancy Sweeney, hello, and Lori, uh, Linda, Colleen, uh, Carol from Tennessee, welcome. And my sister Brenda, she must be on her break. She's a, a nurse for a pediatric office and is amazing. Um, and, and is it Jillian? And Ramona, hello Ramona. Um, Too Fun Subby, is that right? From Huntington Beach, California. Oh, yeah. you guys have all the fun, all the sun over there. Uh, welcome. And I see Amy. Um, Laura's from North Carolina, that's cool. Um, and Terry from Wisconsin, Tina, um, and Manon from Quebec, wow. Thank you for joining us, Northern neighbor. Uh, let's see, uh, thank you, Ramona. Yes, I'm enjoying this poncho. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it today. I hope you're not tired of hearing about it yet, but um, honestly, it's not that cold here, but I'm not burning up or anything because for those of you who know about wool, wool's very breathable. It has some amazing qualities. So let me let me just go through my list here a little bit real quick here. Um, Gail from Trenton, New Jersey. Thank you for joining us, Gail. Um, and Lynn, thank you. Joining us from Chicago. Wow. Uh, and Wanda. Hi, Wanda. Thank you so much. You're faithful. Uh, from North Carolina. And Brenda's going back to work now. Take care. Um, be careful sticking all those babies with those needles, Brenda. She's, um, she gets to do all the dirty work of the doctor. The doctor comes in and is real nice, you know, and then she comes in with all the shots. And so they don't really like her that much <laughs> when they see her coming with the shots. But actually, she's one of the best, um, most gentle folks you'd ever want to meet. Um, and Donna from Pennsylvania. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Tina from Chicago. Wow, I'd love to go to Chicago sometime. I've never been there. I don't think I've even been to Illinois, come to think of it. I've been to Indiana, but not to Illinois. Um, and Christine from Herndon, Virginia. We're, we're practically neighbors. That's just across the Potomac from me. Um, oh, thank you, Ramona. She says, no, she's not getting tired of that poncho. I'm actually looking forward to wearing it once it gets a little, you know, once a little gets a little cool outside. Um, we've had a couple of days hinting at that, but, you know, so far it just hasn't panned out for a long period. So... Anyway, um, and Terry, yes, Terry says she likes the shrug. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. That's going to be a future project for the Bonnie Bay Crochet channel. And um, Lori from Hoopston, Illinois, if I said that correctly. Um, Jillian from St. Louis. 
I did spend a night in St. Louis once, missed a connecting flight. Uh, <laughs> um, but I would love to give St. Louis another chance. I never really had a chance to really see what's outside the airport. Um, oh, Esther, Esther, hello. Please tell my son to, uh, you know, check in <laughs> about school. I'd love to hear how, how school is going with him. Say, say hey to your mom. And um, Esther, tell your mom I'm praying for her. I know she had surgery this week. And um, just pray that the hands get better. Uh, all of us crocheters here, you know, know what that must be like to have your hands operated on. Oh my goodness, that would be uh, a nightmare. I I don't want to break anything, but if I had a choice, I'd almost rather break a leg than a hand, if you know what I mean. But um, don't want to break either. <laughs> but um, God bless you, Susanna. Just hope you hope you feel better. Um, hope you're recovering well. Um, I see Carrie from Danville, Illinois. Hello, and I see Rebecca from Missouri. Um, Carol from Louisiana, hello. And uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Well, I'm gonna go ahead. And if if you haven't already, I would just like to ask you to subscribe. Let me go ahead and move this a little bit. Whoops, I hit that a little too hard. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss any of the notifications. Um, also, if you could hit that thumbs up if you like what's going on here, and if not, well, sorry. <laughs> And um, if you want to hear more, get the notifications. If you could hit that little bell, I think that will kind of signify that you'll, you know, be notified when I do videos. And I try not to spam people. I try to release maybe, um, if I'm able, one new design per week or at least maybe a, like if it's a larger design, you know, a continuation of a particular design. And I'm trying to do this Friday fun thing as often as I can. And I'm trying to do it every Friday. I want to let you know right now that next Friday is iffy, okay? I am going to do everything possible to, to meet with you, to show you my latest adventure, which is truly going to be an adventure. <laughs> let me tell you about it. Actually, I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to keep you waiting. Um, but I'm going to be broadcasting, hopefully, if I can, from an undisclosed location. It'll be a location that's far, far from Maryland. I'll just say that much. Um, and I'm really going to be dependent on inter not, yeah, internet access or cell access. I have no clue if either of those are even going to be available next week. So, um, this is what I, what I'm going to try to do to communicate with you. Go ahead and adjust this down again. Just a tad. There we go. Um, so what I'm going to suggest is, um, I'm going to communicate in the, the community tab. If you go to my main, main page, um, and there's tabs across um, like playlist, videos, etc., where you can get more into my channel. If you just hit the community button, that's where I've been posting the notifications. It's it's kind of like kind of like Facebook, but not really. I mean, it's definitely not Facebook. Um, it's but it's a way. If you go to my channel and you hit the community button, I'm going to put a post there, whether I'm going to be able to broadcast live or not. But if I can't broadcast live. I promised I will have a video up later in the day and and I'll fill you in on what's going on, okay? Um, so, and also if, you're fo if you follow me on the Bonnie Bay Crochet Facebook page, I will also be posting there, you know, whether or not, um, and it's gonna be probably down to within 30 minutes of, of noon, probably 11.30, 11, 11.30, I might know by then whether I'm able to broadcast or not. So that's that's how thin the, the time line is going to be um, because I'm actually going to be in transit to a location um, during that time for something pretty special. It's kind of something on my husband's bucket list and he sprung this on me about three weeks ago. I had no idea we were doing this but um, um, and it kind of makes me laugh because prior to this past year um, I was a home homemaker, homeschool mom, a uh, crochet designer <laughs> and stayed home for probably 30 years and you know um, didn't go very many places the caretaker of my mom as you know she she passed away on um, this past uh, right before Christmas so it's been a you know it's been a transitional year for me trying to figure out you know the new mojo for you know what I'm supposed to be doing I think it's supposed to be doing the crochet but um but anyway so for those of you who are just started following me, probably think, oh my gosh, you know, you guys always travel. Well, that has been our summer. But just to, set, just to let you know that this is, you know, 
this is after 30 years of staying put. So um, anyway, so I'll be broadcasting, I hope, next week. And if not, check the community tab and I'll let you know, you know, what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so thanks for your patience there. But I am trying to be regular about this. And actually, that's going to go for the next two weeks. Okay, so next two weeks are going to be iffy. Um, but I will keep in touch with you through Facebook and through the community communication there. Okay. All right. Well, um, let me see. I know I missed a lot. Um, let me see. Let me just take a quick glance here. I, I, I'm sorry if I can't ugh, say hey to everybody. I'm really trying. Um, okay. Yeah. David Browning says he had a friend who, who was a pianist who had to have surgery on both wrists. Oh my goodness. I hope they have, uh, I cannot imagine that because um, I'm a musician too. Um, uh, my first love when I was in college, apart from the Lord, was was um, music, was playing, you know, my flute and, and guitar and whatever else I could get my hands on. And I cannot imagine losing my hands. That must be a trial. Okay, Layla from Baltimore. Welcome, neighbor. Um, I'm just down the road. Yeah, and Becky said, don't forget to hit that like button, guys. That would be really great. And Kelly Brown, say hey. Um, let me see. We've got some great conversations going on amongst you guys and girls here. That That's wonderful. Um, April, hey. We'll just say hello. Um, thank you, Esther. Thanks for giving, giving your mom my message. Um, I do need to get up and visit you guys. Um, I need to do that, like, soon. Um, I'll be in touch, Esther. Let me know if there's anything I can do for your mom. Um, I may have to just make a quick trip up there. Um, let's see. Sorry for being so slow, guys. Okay, so Cynthia from California. Hi, Cynthia. I'll try not to envy your state, <laughs> at least the weather part. Um, yes, thank you, Tina. You like Edna? She's She's... She's right behind me here. Yeah, she's one of my favorites. I, I just think she's a cool character. Um, and she's actually patterned after a pretty remarkable designer who's very inspirational. Um, yes, yes. It says, too fun. Subby says, yeah, she's done the same thing. Um, that's cool. So you you lead worship. That's, that's very cool. Um, and let's see... And David says his pianist friend's now doing very well. Thank you. That's good. I think I would just about go nuts, though, with that. But, but that's, that, I'm glad that recovery is, has taken place there. Um, all right. Um, yes, Johnny says, I can't imagine a day without crocheting. I mean, you know, just using your hands. I mean, how do you, I mean, how do you, how do you wash your hair? I mean, how do you brush your teeth? You know, how do you do all these things that we just take for granted you know, with all the gifts that, you know, God has given us. I mean, if our body is just functioning at all, I mean, if we can just stand up and walk across the room, <laughs> we are so blessed. I mean, we have so many, so many things to be thankful for. Well, um, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and plow into some of the agenda here. Um, I wanted to let you know about these hats that are on my channel um, maybe some of you have seen this. This is, uh, I'm calling the crocheted harvest hats. Um, this is actually available on my channel now. I think I put, I don't know if I, yeah, I think I did put the right-handed video in the links below, in the description box below. As you know, if, if you watch me at all, all the information you need is just below, okay? Um, and there is also a left-handed version on there. So if you just go to the top bar on my channel where there's a little spyglass, a little circle and a stick next to it. Um, you can search for this and you just, you know, just put left-handed harvest hats and the left-handed version will come up for you lefties. Um, I'll try to, you know, fix the video description once I'm done here today and add that, that lefty, um, link as well. But, um, and also the pattern, if you're looking for the pattern, it's available in my Lovecrafts store. So if you go to lovecrafts.com and just put Bonnie Barker in the search bar, all the patterns will come up. But I also have the link below in the video description. And let me check to verify. I'm pretty sure this is sized for many, many different hats. Okay, let me, let me just verify. I don't want to say something that I don't do. Okay, so this hat 
Um, in the video, it's I show you how to make an adult sized hat. Um, in the pattern are the the changes for um, an infant's hat and a youth size hat. Okay, um, and this this uses just regular. You can use any yarn you want, but I use worsted weight acrylic yarn. And um, I was looking through my bin that has all this extra acrylic yarn that I've been saving. Actually, I'm saving it all up together in one place. And I have a special project that I'm going to try to use it on this winter, you know, when the snow's piling up outside. I'm going to spring a project on you, I hope. Um, let me see. I'm reading a little note here from Esther. Yeah, Esther said she had surgery on her left arm and and she couldn't do much. Oh, Esther, that must have been really hard. Uh, but you're such a sweetheart. Um, she's such a wonderful lady. I, maybe if you come down to, to my house sometime, you can join me for a Friday fun so everybody could meet you. That would be really cool. Because um, Esther's a, a, a young gal. Um, and I just, just love it when, you know, some people, you know, uh, you know, the, the the generation, my children's generation, um, just to be able to encourage them to pick up the hook every now and then and put down the phone or the computer or the tablet and, you know, do something different with their hands um, besides, you know, looking at all the social media. Um, but I don't want to bash it too much, especially since I'm on it right now. But um, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, you know, just not being too preoccupied with, with something that's not happening, but, you know, really focus on living in the now and living with the people that are in the room with you rather than, you know, somebody so far away. Okay. Um, let me look, look, look. Well, Esther, whenever your mom says it's okay, come on down. Maybe you can come down, you know, with, with Sarah sometime. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Okay. So, so we have, have this. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. Now I've got another hat pattern in my store. Um, I'll just show you the picture of it. I don't have links in this pattern yet, but I'm hoping to put this pattern also up in my, um, on my YouTube channel soon. I hadn't realized that I hadn't done that yet. I thought surely I had done this video and I'm like, oh dear, <laughs> can't find it. Well, because you didn't do it. So, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to do it before I leave um, this coming week so that it'll be released in the next couple weeks. Okay, so hold me to this. Ask me about this if I don't do this. If you don't see this in two weeks, um, you have my permission to bug me, okay? All right. Um, I want to show you what I found. I was looking through my bin of yarn, and we've talked about this. Some of you say you have you remember this brand, Wind Tuck Yarn. Isn't that cool? Um, it doesn't feel that great, to be honest with you. It's um, it's actually made out of, it says 100% Orlon. And I want to show you the price. This was purchased a long time ago. Look how much the regular price of this scan was. Isn't that cool? $1.37. <laughs> um, and, and this was in the day when Kmart was the only store. Where, where I lived, um, just to tell you how long ago this was, uh, there was no such thing as a Walmart. Um, there were none near us. Or I never heard of Walmart until, I don't know, um, I want to say the 80s. But um, this was this was bought years and years ago before that. Let's see if there's any um, oldie but goldies out there like me. Um, yes, Mary says she remembers that yarn. Um, and Joe's Web, too. Um, Lori says she has some wind tuck. Um, I don't have much of this stuff left. I mean, of course, you know, it's impossible to match the, you know, the dye lot or, or any of that stuff um, at this stage. Um, let's see. Yes, Lori says she wished she could get her two granddaughters interested in crafts. Well, you know, um, tempt, her, tempt your children. Tempt them with something really cool to crochet. And, you know, they may just get interested. Um, yes, um, Crochet Me Pink. Kelly says that, yeah, it's been many years since there was even a Kmart, too. I... I I think a lot of the ones near me have been closed, um, so I, I I'm not sure they've done that. You know, Kmart's not really doing well, or they've they don't exist <laughs> here anymore. Um, Carol Frederick says she yeah, remembers um, Wintuck. Um, Missy says she has some too, and Dawn, yeah, it's kind of kind of cool. Um, and let's see, 
yeah, Gay Apple says they had Jack Frost yarn. I I I may have remembered that. I don't remember much um back then. Um yes, Tina says she used to get it from Ben Franklin. There used to be a Ben Franklin right not too far from here. But that was that was early nineties here and it's it's gone. Um it's actually turned into a really cool music store. <laughs> Um, so I can't complain too much, but, um, yeah, I remember Ben Franklin too. Um, yeah, David Browning remembers life before Walmart. High five for that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I love Walmart too. I mean, they, they supply, have supplied this growing family with, um, lots and lots of groceries and stuff over the years. Um, let's see. All right. That's my cue that I have 10 more minutes. Um, yeah, Woolco. Yes, Wilco. And do you do you all remember um, Zayers? Z a y r e. Do you remember that store? And they had um, these big letters across the top of the store. And I remember being less than ten years old in my dad's car in the back seat, watching just watching in the parking lot how each letter would light up one at a time. Z a y r e. Then they'd all flash together. I don't know if you remember that. I'm probably going going way 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 back here. Um, let's see, see, David says she, he met a, a woman who was an art therapist working with youth with at, okay, with at risk youth. And she taught them how to crochet. Some of the toughest guys were so proud of the hats they made. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Um, and there's nothing, there's nothing, you know, extremely girly or wimpy about crocheting for guys, you know, either. Um, I think I've told you about um, a dear friend of ours, family friend, who's um, the husband of, of a sweet friend of ours, and um, he's an anesthesiologist and has been in the army, you know, lifts weights. There's definitely nothing, you know, uh, nothing unusual about his manlyhood or anything, and he he can crochet amazing things, and he can also play Rachmaninoff on the piano. So, I mean, just very gifted um, people, I think it's, um, you know, it's a great, great skill to have, and it's a lot of fun. Well, um, some of you were asking about the shrug. Let me show you this. It looks a lot better from the back than the front, because, um, let me see. Let me go ahead and lower this a bit, too. If I can. There we go. Okay. This is what I was crocheting. Um, I posted a couple pictures on my um, Facebook page. And um, this is made using, let's see, using this yarn. Of course, this is a different color. The Parfait Premier Yarns. Um, it takes three. So if this is something you're interested in, in making, this is gonna be coming soon. And it has, it has large sleeves. I don't know if you can see this. Um, it's kind of in crocheted. I'll put the arm out here. It's crocheted in a kimono style. Okay, let me turn it around. Mm. Okay. And so, okay, this, this is the front. It's kind of hard to show you on a mannequin that's not alive, but um, so this is the way it would come around in the front. Um, it kind of comes down low, so it covers, you know, your bottom a bit, um, and it's very flexible as far as the sizing goes. Um, this doesn't, whoa, well, there goes my scarf, but anyway, I'm having a hard time there. That might, that might look a little bit better. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, it's a very, it, it's like wearing a cabled hug is the best way I can describe it. It's, it's very cushy, cozy, um, and, and the one size can fit anybody small to large. And um, to make it for the you know, extra large to 3X or, or whatever size you want beyond that, excuse me, um, there's just, a, uh, just making it a little bit longer and those adjustments will be in the written pattern. But this is coming soon. I'm thinking late October, early November um, to the channel. So if that's something you might want to be thinking about, I don't know, for a Christmas gift or maybe even just for yourself, 
Um, I just love things like this to wear around the house where it's open in the front, but yet I'm not freezing. You know, I can be kept warm, but not, not roasting. Um, so, you know, anyway, so that's, that's what we've got coming. Um, Tana says she's got four scans of that already. Gray would be a great color, actually. Um, the reason I even chose this, I mean, besides the fact that I like green, is is I had it in my stash. So, you know, I'm just trying to draw from that more and more, um, you know, just like you, you know, on a budget and, you know, save money where I can. Um, she's asking, is that similar to what's called a cocoon? I'm not really sure. I, I'm not up on all the new terminology, um, Crochet Me Pink, so I am not sure, but um, it's a shrug. That would be a, a name for it. Um, so I, if it has other names, possibly, but um, I'm just not familiar. Um, Candy says she'd like to start making it now. Well, um, I still have to do the. I still have to. Um, I still have to edit the videos. They're still in my computer, waiting for me to do some more work on them. But um, I will get to this as soon as I can. Um, it'll probably have to wait until I get back into town. Um, and Rebecca says she remembers Ben Franklin in Kansas City and Woolco and Woolworth. Yep. T G and Y. Wow. Yes. Um, so anyway, this is coming, something to look forward to. And let's see what else we got. Um, oh, for those of you who, who missed last week, let's see, where did it go? Um, just to let you know, I have some new items. Um, if you saw me last week, you've seen these already, but um, got some new things happening in my Teespring store, which the all the information should be right down at the bottom of the video, but um, this kind of goes, no, it's not knit, goes with one of the songs that's on my channel, um, kind of the no, it's not knit, no, it's not knit, no, it's not knit, this is a hook and it's called crochet, to the tune of Feliz Navidad, it's a song we did at the um, conference at CGOA, and so this is, um, actually this is Becky's shirt, she's going to be helping me at the upcoming, or I hope she's going to be helping me, we still have to work that out. Um, at the Frederick Fiber Fest. I didn't put any information in the link, but I'll try to update that. Becky, remind me to do that, sweetheart. Um, the Frederick, Maryland has a Fiber Fest on October 12th, and I believe the hours are 10 to 5. And I'm going to have a stand there, and um, I'm going to have a few of these available. Um, this is my bag. I've been carrying this all week, and this is so much fun. Um, this is the other side. Um, and it just kind of preemptively answers the question, you know, what are you knitting? And, you know, usually, you know, and cheerfully I try to answer absolutely nothing. I am crocheting. This is a hook. So um, it's been a lot of fun to carry this. I'm going to carry this one with me on my trip, too. That's where I'm going to put all my, my yarn projects. And, you know, it's a good conversation starter, if nothing else. Um, and it's always great to talk with people and you know, interest them in what you're doing. I mean, that's that's how we're going to keep this craft alive and well for generations to come is, you know, be friendly and interest people in what we're doing. All right, let me see if I can catch up here. Um, yeah, Crochet Me Pink says she likes the open fronts over ponchos. I totally get that. I like both. <laughs> so um, outside is nice with ponchos. Inside, I like them definitely open. Um, that's why I think I like cardigan sweaters better than over-the-head sweaters because um, you have options. Um, Elaine says the shrug looks like it would be good for our warm Southern California weather. Well, I don't know if I don't know if you're joking or serious, but um, when I was out in California, when you go inside, the air conditioning can be cold, just like Florida. So um, yeah, it can actually be good for places like Florida when you go to the frozen food section of your supermarket, you know, things like that. And I'm being very serious about that because my mom carried one with her every week at the store, every single week. Um, Esther says, yes, yeah, she's had her people ask her, what are you knitting? Yeah, they ask, they ask you that all the time, Esther. So just plan ahead, be cheerful, and be ready for your answer. <laughs> um, well, that's cool, Carol, about your story about um, about Woolworth. She said her dad would give them a dollar and then set them loose 
to do our to do their Christmas shopping. And I bet you brought got some pretty cool things too. Oh yes, the T-shirts, the the links um, are are just right down below the video. There should be some pictures across once the video renders, um, but they kind of pop up now. I think on all my videos. So, um, and I'm going to be adding a really a, a new design coming soon too that my son um, Hudson has designed for me. I don't know if it's something that you'd want to to wear in the same way that this is, but. Um, I'm, I can't wait to get mine in the mail to show you guys. Um, I was hoping to show it to you today, but I might have to wait until um, till next week or a couple weeks after that. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, I saved the best for last. Okay. Okay, as, as um, they used to say, one more thing. Um, I'm real excited to show this to you. This is coming on Monday. Okay, this is an easy beginner project. This is called the Easy Beginners Basket Weave Baby Blanket. And I use the the Bernat Pipsqueak yarn for this. And oh my goodness, it was like crocheting with sifted flour. I know that's impossible, but um, it feels amazing. Um, I made a small blanket like this for my daughter's cat. I think I may have mentioned this before. and. Uh, yeah, I only had one at the time, so I just made a small little granny square blanket to put in the cat's bedding. And my daughter made a video of when they gave her the, the blanket, and she spent probably half an hour just just, just, just kneading this thing. She just went crazy over it, and um, it is that soft. I mean, it makes a cat go nuts. So um, just think how much fun it would be for a baby, you know, just nice, soft texture. Now it is a beginner project, and yes, I do believe beginners can do um, basket weave, um, especially with a video. Um, I like to push beginners past one or two things that they can do. I like to early push them in to to, do, to learning new things because if you don't do that, you kind of get bored with it and then stagnate and then drop it for like 20, 30 years. Um, and I've talked to many people who did that. You know, you learn how to do a granny square. Granny squares are great. And then, then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm bored with this, and I don't know how to do anything else, so I just stop. Well, I just want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So that's why I want beginners to um, try this. Now, you do have to know the double crochet and, um, let me see, double crochet in the chain and single crochet to be able to do this and slip stitch. But beyond that, um, and I think you learn a half double. I can teach you how to do that with this. Um, but that, but anyway, so this is coming on Monday. It'll be there for right and left-handed versions. And if, if you don't like working with super fuzzy yarn because it can be a little challenging, it's not hard when you're using front post and back post stitches like this pattern uses. But the very beginning where you have to work in the chain at the, that first row is the worst. And, and I will say that up front, and I do give hints on how to get through that first row. Now, if you don't wanna use the super fuzzy yarn, just pick any yarn of your choice. I'm any um, worsted weight or, or um, bulky weight yarn of your choice, and you will be fine. This is a bulky weight yarn, and actually this blanket is a little on the heavier side. So if you went down to, you know, um, you know a worsted weight yarn, um, you would be fine with this. Just make sure that you size the hook down one size or, or not, depending on what you use. Okay, let me catch up here. Um, thank you all. I just want to let you all know that I do read all of your comments. I usually, the ones that I can't read at the moment, um, I do go back over those and, and, and you know, just, just to let you know that I am hearing you. Um, Okay, um, but, but anyway, so so this is coming, and I'm gonna give you a little hint. There is something else coming, I'm hoping mid-October to late October, and that is I am working on publishing a, com well, I don't wanna say complete collection because nothing is truly complete, but um, a collection of, the, of 11 baby blankets for easy beginners. Um, and I am super excited about this. It's going to, if, if you'd like to collect patterns for all of these, it's actually going to cost less because the price of the book is going to be less than if you bought each individual pattern. 
Um, and for those of you who have not been to my store, I charge $1.99, um, you know, for the patterns, for the written pattern. Um, this one will be up in the store soon. I'll try to get it up this afternoon, but it's not up there yet um, for those of you who like to work with the pattern. But the idea of the book is to help people to learn to read crochet patterns and to, you know, do them with the videos. So this way, combining the two, you you have a resource there, and and it's to try to help you to overcome the fear of reading abbreviations for the stitches. That's really the only challenge to reading crochet patterns is learning what SC means, which as you all, most of you probably know, SC is the abbreviation for single crochet, um, lowercase SC, of course, not South Carolina, but anyway, and DC, double crochet. So um, it's a book for beginners, um, but but in my, my journey of doing all of these beginner blankets this past year, I, I have just kind of reconnected with just the joys of simplicity and, and I've not been bored one minute, especially when using color changing yarns that are on the markets now. Oh my goodness, it's just fun. It's just fun for me. Um, and it's a great way to keep up with all the newborn babies being born in our church. I like to give them all a baby blanket where I can. And, um, and so it's helped me to try to think on how I can do that, um, make them quick projects and easy projects so that I could keep up with all that. And, um, and I should thank all the moms at the church because they're the ones who have kind of um, inspired this project for me. Well, let me let me catch up one second here. Now, Crochet Me Pink says she's not good at reading patterns, but found, she has found that it helps to write it out with the repeats. You actually might be very good at writing patterns because you're doing that. Um, but you're right. I mean, once, you know, for, for a lot of these blankets, it's going to be an easy repeat. Um, it might be a four row repeat, and I think that's the most complicated one. I have another baby blanket that's coming out a, a couple weeks after this one, um, and then that will complete um, all of the patterns that are gonna be in this leaflet. And um, it will be available on Amazon um, and other outlets as well for those who, you know, who sponsor some of the Amazon self-published works. And, um, if you look in the description below and you go to Bonnie's Amazon page, there's a listing of all the books that I do have um, published both through Leisure Arts, um, F and W Media, which is now going over to Penguin Random House, as you well know, um, and um, the other self-published books that I have out there. They're they're all you know all there on that Amazon page. And if you ever have any trouble, you know, reaching any of that or finding any of it, you know, you know how to get in touch with me. My contact information is down below, just bonniebay at me.com. Well, that's all I have for you today. I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And I'm really hoping that I get to, you know, get to do a live broadcast. But in the event that I don't, hang in there because I will, I will be back as soon as I can. Well, you guys have a wonderful week. Stay safe. God bless. Bye-bye.